This is an 11-day backcountry canoe trip that my son and I took in Killarney Provincial Park. You won't see us much in the video though, because this was all shot time-lapse from the bow of our canoe. We explored a lot of places and traveled 153 kilometers. Killarney is uh, known for its spectacular scenery that's characterized by these white quartzite hills you see ahead of us. And George Lake is sort of a transition zone because on the, uh, the right side of us now, it's all pink granite and the white quartzite starts on the left. The first portage of the trip takes us to Freeland Lake. It's a very easy portage, uh, but kind of pretty, a bit like Freeland itself. Freeland Lake isn't very characteristic of the other lakes in the park. Uh, most of the lakes of Killarney are dead and have really, really clear water, whereas Freeland Lake is kind of marshy and you don't see the white hills in the background. Normally to get to Kakakizi Lake, you uh, have to portage around this creek. Uh, but if water levels are high enough, uh, you, you can travel the creek, uh, albeit with a few liftovers, as you can see here. Uh, we, uh, we got lucky and it wasn't really that hard. It certainly was a lot easier than carrying all our gear. There were a few times I was wondering if we were going to get stuck. My canoe is kind of old. It's, uh, I got it used and it, it had some damage when I got it. And these uh, liftovers take an additional toll. And by midway through this trip, it was evident that uh, it, it wasn't going to make another trip. Uh, we kind of wore it out on this one. We're coming up to a bridge where the La Cloche Silhouette Trail crosses our route. The uh, Silhouette Trail is a multi-day hiking trail around the interior of the park. I've never uh, paddled on Kakakizi Lake before, even though we've uh, hiked past it a few times while we were going up to see the crack or snowshoeing. It started to spit a bit here. You can see drops of water on the camera lens, but we didn't really get wet. We actually didn't get wet uh, while traveling at all through the trip, even though it rained a couple of times when we were stopped. Our only real portage of the day was the uh, carry from Kakakizi Lake over to uh, Terry Lake. Uh, this is where the uh, camera battery died on us, so uh, we won't get to see much of this one. It was pretty easy. There's, it's a little steep at the very beginning, but then it just flattens out, and there's even a boardwalk to uh, get you over the mud, which wasn't even really bad right now. We took the first campsite on Terry Lake. There's actually a really neat one right across from where we were, but it was occupied. But it has a waterfall that uh, runs from uh, the, the other nearby lake. Not only is the waterfall kind of scenic, it's uh, also pretty soothing to listen to the water gurgling away all night. I hadn't really gotten the workflow down for charging the uh, camera with the solar panel yet, so I didn't actually get much video the second day here. It's kind of too bad because it was uh, really pretty uh, on the second part of the day as we started to get uh, closer into the, the mountains again. We uh, saw a bear cub this day and also the route uh, to David Lake, the, the portage and the water trail was really, really nice. Our third day was uh, Xander's birthday and also one of the tougher days of the trip. Uh, we were uh, doing the uh, very long portage from David to Great Mountain Lake. That was about the only thing we were doing that day, but it is a very long portage, even if it isn't, uh, it isn't very steep. Or you don't rise a lot, but you go up and down a lot, so it ends up being quite a bit of work. The first part of this portage is another one of those areas where you have to make a decision. Uh, you'll notice on the left, it's, a, it's kind of a big clearing. It's a sort of a, a riverbed, but there's not a lot of water in parts, and other parts there are. Sometimes it's navigable, sometimes it's not. Uh, and every time I'd walk past a, a take-in or put-out point, I'd think maybe I should drop the canoe and we should try to paddle a bit. I just didn't want to get into loading and unloading the canoe constantly, or end up getting stuck somewhere and then having to turn back. Obviously right here it's not navigable. Uh, there are some spots up ahead where you can see a little open water. I believe that this is the longest portage of the trip. Um, I know that the next day, uh, or in the night, I, I thought maybe I'd hung my hammock wrong or something because uh, I couldn't get comfortable and uh, I thought I wasn't hanging on my shoulders right. And then when I got up in the morning, I realized that they were just killing me because of carrying the canoe for so far. It, uh, it takes a few days into a trip to get used to uh, doing a portage like this. And, and some people kind of ask me, like, why would you do this to yourself? And 
I think there's a few reasons. Um, one, you get a really big sense of accomplishment out of out of doing something like this. But also, uh, the portages they they get you further away from from other people, from from the world. They they get you to more remote, wild places because not many people take these longer portages. Uh, there's a, another more tangible benefit, perhaps, which is that uh, this was only an 11 day trip, but uh, we both dosed a significant change in our fitness level in just those 11 days. Uh, I lost five pounds on this trip, and we were eating a lot of food because we'd packed a little too much, so we were trying to eat down the weight. There, there are obviously easier ways to get in shape, but uh, I kind of prefer having something a little more tangible, something a little more real as a, as a, a fitness motivator. I think the portage also gives the uh, trip an extra feeling of adventure. It's, uh, you, you've just done something a little, little different, a little out of the ordinary. So yeah, they, they do hurt, but, uh, there, there, there definitely is uh, an extra reward in, in these trips with the, the longer carries. Ultimately, I, I guess I really don't have to sell it that much. Uh, if you're still listening at this point, you probably are interested in this kind of trip in, in some way or another, so you probably understand part of the appeal of a portage. Up here, we uh, start going up this hill, and then we come out onto this uh, open area where it's bare rock. It's a little tricky here because it transitions from being a really obvious trail in the woods to uh, having to follow rock cairns. Xander uh, actually got a little lost here. He uh, stopped to take a break when he came out to the open rock, and then when he started going again, he forgot about the blaze that told him to turn and follow the cairns, and so he headed straight into the woods. And he got a fair ways in before he realized he wasn't on the trail, and then he couldn't find the trail. Uh, I was starting to worry about him at the other end of the portage, and uh, he just showed up when I was about to head back for my second load. I was actually hotter on the second trip when I was carrying the food bag, and uh, I was when we got to the open rock again, I lied down on the rocks, and they were surprisingly cool. It was really refreshing. Originally, I was intending to put the canoe down for a break uh, several times on this portage, and uh, then I just kept going and going, and I was so close to the end now, I kind of thought, well, I might as well just go for it. And uh, right when I decided that, I um, got the painter stuck on a log that I couldn't move forward, so I had to put it down. And I was just exhausted then. I was really hot, really thirsty, so I just sat there for a while and took a break. We're about to pass a couple of people here. These are the last people we were going to see for a couple of days. We didn't really uh, have much of a chance to chat because we both had canoes on our heads, just a few pain grunts of shared, uh, shared agony. And then finally, I'm just starting to be able to see the uh, lake through the trees, which is a really welcome sight when you're on a long portage like this. There are some really nice cliffs at the uh, far end of Great Mountain Lake, but uh, we never pointed the canoe at them, so you won't see them here. Uh, I actually think Little Mountain Lake's a lot prettier than Great Mountain, and uh, we didn't end up going there this trip. We are uh, spending the night on Gale Lake, two nights actually, and uh, Gale's kind of neat because there's only one campsite, so you have the whole place to yourself. So we didn't see anyone for two days once we were up there. Uh, this last portage was mercifully short after the last one, uh, but it's also kind of brutally steep. The uh, campsite on Gale's kind of neat. It's on this huge exposed rock face, and there's all this uh, sort of flintstone furniture made out of huge boulders that are flat and have been turned up to make tables and chairs. 
and for once the uh, camera battery lasted the whole day, so there we are. We spent two nights on Gale, so there was a bit of a gap for us. We had a pretty bad rainstorm one night. That's also why, even in the video, it's right next to it, but I found the wrong spot to take out for the portage. It was actually a little easier to get out here. I didn't get my shoe full of mud, but you'll see that when I start carrying, uh, there's no trail. I'm kind of looking around to figure out where the heck it is. It's always a little awkward when that happens, but uh, it wasn't too bad. It just took me a little finagling. There it is. And it was much easier to carry down than up here. This part of Great Mountain is pretty easy to uh, navigate. It's nice and clear, but as we get near the end, uh, there's all kinds of logs and deadheads, and we keep having to uh, back out around them. There used to be a lumber camp there, and there's a, a lot of debris and, and stuff that makes it difficult to navigate. And then when we get to the final bit, uh, you can see where we're trying to take out in the mud there, and uh, just couldn't push through the mud any further because the level was so low. And then I looked to the left there and saw that, oh, there's another spot that everyone's been taking out. I felt kind of silly about that. There was a tree down on this portage, and uh, you know when you see it coming at you at this speed, it, it's not that daunting, but I had a lot of time to worry about how I was going to get around it. Eventually, uh, there's the tree. I had to uh, put the canoe down and then slide under myself because uh, I couldn't fit it. And then as we come down here to Fish Lake, there's a, uh, an old trapper cabin. A, I think it may be abandoned now or used by the park staff. Uh, it's that little log structure on the right there. Now, there are two ways to get from here to Murray Lake. Uh, one is to go on a northern route up through the hills and do a lot of portaging, or you can do this way if the water level's good. And uh, we heard that it was, and it was. So we kind of got lucky with water levels uh, at every turn on this trip. After Fish Lake, we uh, take uh, Howry Creek, uh, which will take us to Gem Lake and then to Howry Lake. Uh, it's a bit like the creek we did on the, the first day of the trip. Last time we were here, we actually had to get out and line the canoe through the creek. Uh, but this time, we uh, there was enough water, and we just went from one end to the other. It's kind of windy, uh, sort of interesting uh, for the change of uh, scenery for after all the uh, lakes and portages. And this day, the uh, camera battery died just after Gem Lake, which is a shame because Howry Lake is really pretty. Uh, and uh, Murray is, isn't so much pretty, but it is interesting. It's a, a long, marshy lake. It was much longer than I expected it to be. For our sixth day, we were only doing one portage. Uh, I, I was actually a little afraid of this portage. Uh, Murray Lake isn't really a great lake to camp on, but it was a great base for uh, tackling the Notch, which is the name for the portage from Murray to Nelly Lakes. It's uh, not the uh, tallest portage, but it's the steepest portage in the park. And uh, I'm just about to start going up the steepest part right here. It's uh, the first time I saw this, I was going the other way, and I just couldn't get over that anyone would be crazy enough to carry a canoe up that, and now I'm doing it. Um, it's, it's also one of the most beautiful portages in the park. Uh, it goes through this amazing valley. Uh, you see these white cliffs on either side. It's, it's really, really an awesome spot. Um, unfortunately, the camera didn't manage to capture a lot of that. There's a uh, pond on my right that's kind of dried up and then as you leave it you cross on this little stone path it's it's pretty almost everywhere along this portage part of the reason that it's so uh, steep is that most of the uh, elevation change is at either end and then there's just this flat spot in the middle um, which really uh you, you do all of your effort in a very short time and then it's pretty easy after that 
The first time I went through here uh, earlier in the day with the pack, I missed this side trail that goes on the flat and I was walking up on the hill on my right. So this is much more comfortable. And now as we start climbing the uh, second steep part of the, uh, the portage, there's a, a waterfall hidden in the trees on the left. And uh, on the right, after we level out, you can just see that there's a hill going straight up and it's all exposed quartz. And so after we finished the portage, we came back and did a, a scramble up there to uh, enjoy the view and look around. Uh, we're just about to come up on Nelly Lake, and Nelly Lake is a really neat park uh, because it's the uh, one of the clearest lakes in the park, and you can see the bottom anywhere. So on a still day, it's like you're flying above uh, the, the the bed of the lake, and uh, it has a a very unique color too because there's a lot of calcium carbonate in the water, and like a lot of the really pretty lakes in Killarney, it's completely dead uh, because the uh, quartzite acts as a buffer and lets the acid rain run right into the lake. Before we left Nelly Lake, uh, we took a tour around the uh, bay where, near where we were camped. Uh, there's reportedly a scow that was owned by the group of seven sunk here, and I've never been in this area of the lake when it was clear enough to see because of the waves. Um, now we're on the looking for the portage to Helen because I goofed again and I saw that boat and I thought it was the portage, but it's not. So I'm looking for it. And uh, there's actually an old ice house just off the left there. And now I'm on the trail proper. Uh, this is one of those portages that's really brutal when you're going the other way. It's not nearly as steep as the notch, but it's a, a very large drop. It always seems like a bit of a shame to me to leave Nelly Lake so quickly after getting there. It's a, it's a lot of work to climb all the way up there. And as you can see, we're just about to climb right back down. Uh, but if you're going on a long trip, you have to figure out where you're going to uh, put your down days and spend multiple nights. So uh, unfortunately on this trip, Nelly uh, didn't cut it. Uh, I'd really like to spend a few more nights on Nelly. I, I did a few years ago, but... Uh, would it be, uh, it's a great spot to explore and go uh, scrambling up in the hills and, or go swimming. Uh, I did a little swimming on this trip because we sort of had a half day on Nelly to take it easy um, because the portage didn't take us that long the day before. Uh, one odd thing, when we were scrambling up in the hills, uh, we were way up on the side of the mountain and we found a pair of flippers someone had left. And, uh, you know, flippers and a mask would be a great way to swim around in Nelly, but I don't know what they were doing up on the hill there. This is a really long portage, uh, and there is one shortcut you can take sometimes, which is there's a lake called Full Lake, or uh, sometimes it's just unnamed lake on the map, and uh, you can paddle across it usually, and uh, it just it's a little mucky, so it doesn't always work out well. And uh, this trip, I decided not to take it. Uh, the takeout was just down up ahead here, and when I didn't. Right after, I, I, it started going uphill, and I was really regretting my decision until I looked through the trees and noticed that the lake's gone. Uh, it's held back normally by a beaver dam, and uh, someone cut a hole through the beaver dam, and the whole lake drained away since two years ago. You can just start seeing some of the missing lake there and uh, through the, the gaps in the trees. And then as we come along here, well, a little more, yeah, and there we're crossing, and that's the beaver dam with the hole cut in it, and uh, this used all to be water right here. And after a long and hot portage, I was really glad to see the water here. Of course, then I had to go back and get the food bag, so it wasn't quite over, but the hard part was done. 
Helen Lake is a really pretty lake, nice clear water, Lake and Killarney. And if you look back, you can see the, uh, the White Mountains you were just in. It's really wild. They were camped there just uh, the night before. The portage between Helen Lake and Low Lake is also a campsite, which is kind of rare in Killarney. It's uh, not very private. There's this frog here on the rock, and uh, he wouldn't get out of my way. Where it had crooked canoe, I had to kick him. The last time we were here, there were a lot of uh, submerged logs at the end of Low Lake, and we did some pretty nasty liftovers. Didn't want to at this time because our canoe was in rough shape, so we just poured around the whole thing. And after this uh, next portage, we have to go through the, uh, this pond. The pond's a little tricky to navigate because the, the reeds are so tall, you can't really see where you're going. You can see us kind of weaving back and forth as we're uh, trying to figure out which way to go here. We're about to leave the park and uh, go into McGregor Bay. Uh, McGregor Bay is a uh, very different terrain than uh, what we have in the park. It's all uh, pink granite and uh, it's kind of nestled between the two forks of the V of the La Poche Mountains. So if you look north or south, you see these uh, beautiful white hills and then this sort of very different uh, terrain in the middle. There are cottages and boats out here, so it is a very different vibe than being in the park. It's not a backcountry experience, but it's still a really nice spot. We're almost at our campsite. Uh, the battery and the camera is just about to die, but first we're going to go through the Russian Pass, which is this uh, rocky channel blasted between the mainland and this island. We have a lot of paddling to do to, uh, for this day, and uh, we're also going to go on a bit of a side hike to grab a geocache. Uh, as we're heading out here, we spotted a minnow cage tied to our campsite, which we hadn't noticed all night. That's why we turned around there. Uh, now we're uh, heading down to McGregor Bay proper, and we're going to hike up to this mountain peak you see just ahead of us there. The trail up to the top is a really nice trail. It's well marked, uh, a lot of interesting spots on the trail itself. And from the top, you get a view of not only McGregor Bay, which is spectacular, but Bay Fin on the other side, which is also amazing. It's a, it's a really great hike. I can't recommend it enough if you're in the area. Um, now we're going to take uh, this portage here, which we're still outside the park, and we're kind of avoiding the uh, infamous pig portage. Uh, the pig is the tallest portage in the park, and it's the other way to get over this ridge. Uh, this is much easier. It's about a kilometer long, but it's uh, it's not really that hard because it's so flat. Uh, and where we're going is we're going to Bay Fin on the other side. And Bay Fin is one of the uh, only uh, freshwater and uh, inland fjords in the world. And uh, there's a really different character to uh, the terrain there. Even though you're surrounded by the same quartzite hills as everywhere else in Killarney, the, uh, the actual geometry of the fjord gives it a, a very distinct feel. When we got to the end of this portage, we met a group of people, and it turns out one of them was the person who'd just hidden the geocache that we found. It was kind of a weird coincidence. And uh, here we go out in the Bay Fin, you can see that the uh, the water was a lot rougher here. It's a, it's a much bigger body of water, and uh, so there's a little more chop in the camera motion. It was wasn't really that bad to paddle because uh, it wasn't uh, it wasn't very windy. We just had to keep going at it, but it certainly was a lot easier than carrying across the pig. And here we're coming back into the park and we're heading for uh, the pool, which is a popular boat anchorage where we're going to spend the night. Uh, we just took the first sight uh, in this channel uh, because we didn't want to get up to where uh, all the other boats anchor. There was a mist uh, rising off the bay in the morning when we got up. It looked great uh, with the sunrise. And then we just started uh, heading down into the park. It's a, it's a really nice paddle in here too. Uh, there, there are still some motorboats that come by from time to time, and I think there's a sailboat coming up on the right. Yeah, there it is. And uh, now we're gonna start uh, the portage over to Artist Lake. And uh, this, uh, this is a very flat portage, uh, but it gets a little confusing up ahead because it crosses the Silhouette Trail. So there are four, four different ways you can go. 
and you pick the wrong one, you're going to have a really bad day. Uh, one of them to the left there goes up to Topaz Lake, and we actually went for a little hike there on the way back. Topaz Lake is uh, a crater lake high up in the hills, and it's uh, one of the sites uh, that the, the backpackers use for a campsite. So it's a really nice spot to visit. It's very pretty. Just up ahead here, I uh, twisted my ankle and I, I almost fell over. I kind of rolled with it, but uh, I almost dropped the canoe when it happened. There it is. And uh, I was a bit worried because I was limping for the rest of this portage. And uh, I was worried that I was going to have a, an injury that would uh, maybe make the rest of the trip uh, too difficult. Uh, turns out that uh, about half an hour of limping, though, I was, I was okay to keep going, which was a good thing. Artist Lake is actually more of a marsh than a lake. There's a lot of lily pads and there's a lot of dead trees in it. Uh, it's a very pretty lake though. There's uh, these quartzite hills in the background again. And it was also really nice to get, get away from uh, all the crowds again and be back inside the park. We did meet someone paddling on Artist Lake, but it, it just it, it's a very different feel when you're, uh, you, the only other people you meet are canoeists. I think it's uh, it's great that all kinds of different people get to enjoy these natural places in different ways. You know, there's the sailboaters and the motorboaters and even the ATVers and the skidoers in the winter. But I think it's also important that we have places with different use patterns. And there are places where you can be alone and in solitude in this kind of environment. And then other places that, for the enjoyment of other kinds of activities. Here we are at uh, the portage to OSA Lake. There was a group that I think they were just heading out on their trip. Uh, this portage, I remember the first time we did this, it seemed really hard and now it was kind of like we're on the home stretch. It's, uh, it's pretty easy from here on in. Everything seems familiar. OSA Lake is a really pretty little lake. It's uh, one of the uh, more famous lakes in the park. It was the first lake in the park and uh, it's ringed by all these white hills. Uh, it's uh, We were uh, trying to find a campsite. Uh, I didn't realize it. This was Labor Day. I thought it was the day after Labor Day so everyone would have cleared out uh, but almost every site on the lake was taken so we kind of did an impromptu tour just checking the other sites to see if there was uh, anything else available and uh, we ended up back with the site uh, we'd stayed at before where I had, um, but we were just going through these islands because the island sites are a little nicer. We had uh, two nights scheduled on OSA Lake, which gave us a little time to uh, enjoy the spot. Uh, we, we almost just took a break the next day. Eventually we did go for a scramble up the hill behind our campsite, uh, which was a really fun experience. There's a lot of really good uh, off trail hiking in corn. The uh, woods are very sparse and you can kind of just move around quite easily and because of all the open rock you usually get some great views from up on these hilltops. We had a bit of a gray day for our last day here as we're heading out. Uh, we're just going, there's a little burned down cabin on that island we just passed uh, and this portage was the only uh, single carry we did of the whole trip. Uh, most of them we would, uh, or all the others, we would do uh, two trips back and forth. I'd do the canoe once and then the food bag the next time, and uh, Xander would take uh, a pack each time. This time uh, I had a pack on with the canoe, and he had two packs. It was more just to say we did it than anything else. There's another tree we had to go uh, under over. I think that one I just uh, put the canoe on top of the tree and then slid under myself. And uh, here we're coming up on Killarney Lake. Killarney is uh, another one of the really pretty lakes in the park. Just up ahead here, you'll see that cliff right there. That's uh, where the crack is, which is uh, a famous hike in the uh, area. It's got a really great view of Killarney and OSA Lake. And uh, here we're trying to find our way to the portage. I'm trying to do it without looking at the map this time. And uh, I didn't get lost for us, which was kind of fun. And uh, here's our second to last portage uh, to uh, Freeland Lake. And we're starting to meet a lot more people by now. There's uh, 
a lot of people on this portage, uh, two different groups. And uh, then we were meeting day trippers later on on Freeland because we were so close to the, uh, the car campground at George Lake. And uh, once we get back to Freeland, we've technically completed our loop since uh, that's where we uh, veered off to Kakakizi when we were starting. And uh, the camera battery just made it here to Freeland and then it gave out. So that's it.